the entire Vatican City was deserted. Artemis was alone in the porch of St. Peter's, daydreaming. She was seated on the raised foreleg of the huge equestrian statue of Constantine there and leaning back against the horse's broad flank. Every so often she would let her consciousness drift to the spinning pillars of flame standing at attention in every doorway in the Vatican's fortification wall. She loved the sight of the leaping flames and their thirsty crackle as they burned no fuel except oxygen and her will. However, she gradually became aware of movement on the other side of the piazza before the basilica. A small crowd of about a hundred humans had marched up the Via della Conciliazione and was entering the vacant St. Peter's Square. Most were dressed in nuns' habits and priest vestments, with at least one scarlet cardinal. A few were carrying a plaster statue of the Virgin Mary from one of the city's churches on a litter. They were singing in low, muted voices. Many of them had tear-stained faces and eyes red and puffy from weeping. Like a funeral party, they made their way forward toward the openness of the square. Artemis cloaked herself in her powers and flew forth from the porch. She alighted atop the tall obelisk grasping the iron cross there for support as she gazed down at the humans. When they had almost reached her at the corner of the piazza, she waved one arm and caused a ten-foot-high wall of fire to spring up, spanning the entire length of the square's entrance, from one end of Bernini's porticos to the other. The humans squealed in terror and spun around to confront the flames that had suddenly appeared behind them. They almost dropped the litter and the singing stopped. The crying began again. Artemis threw a halo of fire around the top of the obelisk but remained hidden. Why do you dare to bring this false virgin before us? She intoned in Italian from her position, sending out a wave of energy that burst the plaster icon into dust. Most of the humans fell to their knees. Two of the nuns fainted into their compatriots' arms. When a coherent word escaped from their sobbing, it was one word. Perché? Why? The new goddess looked down at them in anger that soon melted into pity. She decided she would try to reason with them. That, that false virgin, virgin was, was but a shadow of, of the, the great, great Artemis. Artemis. We, we have, have come, come to, to free you from, from error, error, to bring, bring a, a new world, world of peace and happiness for all on earth. earth. They did not seem to be listening. The cardinal was fervently praying, hands clasped in front of him, head bowed. One nun was gripping the hair that had come loose from her cowl on both sides of her head. The rest continued to repeat, Perché? 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 You, you must, must give, give up, up the, the old ways, ways. The, the old, old dead, dead ways. ways. They, they were, were never, never correct. correct. One human on his knees was trying hysterically to push the plaster dust into a pile as if it would naturally reform into his beloved virgin. Artemis tried to make her voice sound reassuring. Come, Come my, my children, children. Leave, leave the, the obsolete, obsolete superstition, superstition behind. behind. We are we here, here to, to save, save you. you. A few began to say the rosary and cross themselves. Artemis's eyes narrowed and she got angry again. How simple it would be, she thought, to blot them out. Bring the wall of flames forward to engulf them. Were they not courting death, coming here in defiance? Perhaps that was what they wanted her to do. She turned the ring of flame around the top of the obelisk into a sickly green. Her voice dripped annoyance now. How dare, dare you approach, approach us, us when, when we, we told, told you to, to go, go away and prepare for the future? future. You, you must, must let it go. go. The, the new, new way is better. The wailing continued. Still shrouded from their view, she glided down to the ground, feeling the cold pavement under her bare feet. Now she could get a good look at them. They were disheveled and dirty and shivering. They were wild with grief. This touched Artemis's heart, and thoughts of destroying them fled her mind. 
One of the younger nuns was near her. The sister had a round, cherubic face that was beautiful even under the dark streaks left by her tears. Artemis walked behind her and could hear the sobs, which were little more than whimpers by now. Under her black habit, the human was aching. The goddess reached out and gently laid her hand on the woman's shoulder. The muscles there leapt at the unexpected touch, and the nun gasped. In a moment, she looked up in the sky and sighed as a flutter of mild electricity coursed through her body. Artemis bowed her own head. She reached back, behind the basilica, into the lavish private gardens of the Pope. She found a fragrant bunch of pink flowers sitting still in a clay planter. Her power plucked a bouquet and brought it forward, flying through the air above the building toward them gathered before the obelisk. A few humans saw the flowers soaring through the sky, including the nun. Each delicate bloom rolled softly over the nun's exposed skin when they reached her, the petals stroking her cheeks and chin and neck and hands. Artemis embraced her from behind, burying her hidden face below the black cowl and sent another wave of electrons. She loved the experience of the human against her body. The nun's legs gave out, and she felt herself supported as the flowers cascaded around her. Artemis sent a single message to the woman's confused mind. It will be all right. As she laid her gently down on the ground, and the nun's face erupted with a blissful smile. Artemis did the same with every human gathered there. Invisible to them, they could still feel her form as she held each one individually and caressed them with a reassuring wave of her power. She brought more flowers and petals forward from the garden until all of the humans were laid down amid a fragrant, multicolored mound in the middle of the pavement, and the old pope's backyard had been stripped clean. When she was done, cooing and sighing had replaced the weeping. Eyes were closed in exhausted slumber or contentment, and some hugged others closer. The goddess had returned.